Hi, my name is Alex Harris and I'm from AH Consulting. I hope you find the presentation range more beneficial, which we formed before lockdown. Stay safe. So with the customer, with, sorry, with customer, with consumer, <laughs> Hi, um, my name is Alex Harris. I'm a business development consultant into the fashion retail industry. I've been working in mass retailing with Woolworths and with uh, Fushini. I've procured and built ranges in India, Mauritius, China, and obviously locally through using the fast fashion model. The program I'm, I'm taking you through today is range building, which is a critical part of a process which the designer needs to follow in order to build a brand and to sell it into a retail. Point number one is brand and product positioning. Um, first, you need to understand the market. You need to know who your competitors are. And then you need to determine where the opportunity lies. You need to identify the target consumer that you would like to be aiming for. You would need then to determine your product offering. And then you would need to select your product and your price positioning. So the point number two is why do we range build and what is range building? What range building is, is essentially is you're planning your collection, your collection of items that you would like to able to sell to the customer in order to entice them to actually purchase your garment. Point three is determining what are the range attributes that are required. These are the parameters that help the designer to determine the level of styling that needs to be placed onto every product type in order to get a consistency across the range. This helps them stay focused in staying true to their product positioning in terms of fashion basics versus high fashion. It ensures that the spirit of the brand is uh, consistent across the collection. An example of this is having a unique local design with influence by international trends. Another example could be your range could be more dressy or you'd be offering core basics. Point number four is determining the range positioning. The range positioning is to determine the level of styling that you want each product type to obviously to comprise of within your collection. You need to determine the size and buying power of your consumer. You need to determine their affordability levels and how much they prepare to pay and how much they actually can afford. You need to understand their manufacturing capability in terms of the number of units they can produce, the manufacturing capability and their pricing. Because it doesn't help producing, wanting to produce small units if it's a large scale manufacturer and vice versa. The final stage on range positioning is an ongoing review of your performance, doing regular comp shops in order to see whether you need to reposition your range. It is not set and therefore that one needs to be remain flexible in terms of how you range bolt gain for it. So the next step is price positioning. And with price positioning is determining what the customer is prepared to pay. And how you do this is through competitive shops and engaging with the consumer. You need to look at what your competitors are charging in order to get the best price that matches the product that you're going to be offering them. You set your price tiering, and when you set your price tiering, you don't be too rigid. You want to set it between selling for 600 and 800. So this will allow you to design different products with different level of styling within that price range. Once you determine your price tiering, you need to determine what is the margin and your costing parameters. So this will allow you to able to produce a garment with the correct fabric price that will put you into that price point that you would like to sell it for. And the most important is understanding the fabric price requirement. So it doesn't help you trying to buy fabric that's 200 rand a meter if you only can afford between 40 and 60 rand. We know that the biggest problem that the independent designer has got is the sourcing of fabric. So therefore, once you know what price parameters you're working towards, it'll make you be a little bit more focused. The next step is to ensure that you build a balanced range. And we call this range splits. In order to range splits, you need to determine what are your commodity splits. So when I talk about a commodity, I'm talking about whether it's a pant, a top, a skirt. You can't just have a lot of product in there. You need to have the correct commodity split that the customer will be looking at buying and obviously buying more of. You need to agree the weight of each commodity because you can't just have tops or just bottoms. You want the customer buys two tops to every bottom, so therefore you've got to obviously plan that in within your range. You need to plan your range over a season and not by monthly inputs. 
because in order to offer real choice, you need to offer the choice over the season rather than try to be everything to the customer all in one month. That will make you oversorted and overstocked. The range considerations are important in terms of seasonal timings. In summer, you'll obviously have a high level of shorts and dresses, where in winter, you'll obviously have more knitwear and jackets. The other consideration is on special occasions such as the matric dance. We know that matric dances have take place from May and June onwards, so therefore you need to have a high dress offering available in stores for April and May for your consumer to be purchasing the dress in time. The final stage is planning your range flow. You need to plan your inputs according to a sales plan. So you do not produce a range and then try to sell. And this is a critical part of the range building process. You need to plan your inputs in unit volumes that could match your sales potential. The seasonal considerations that I mentioned before also extend to geographic locations. For example, winter in Durban is different to winter in the rest of the country. The special occasions you need to consider are religious holidays such as Eid, Diwali, which is a very focused, happens once or twice a year. And then your weighting of your range needs to match your customer requirement. Back to work, for example, in January. You've got your competitors busy putting in back to work products, back to school. What are you going to do? You need to also identify a poor selling period. So instead of saying, my range doesn't sell in February, March and April, I will start again in May, is that you need to determine what can you sell that is accordance to your range that you can sell in that low selling period. The last point, which is most important, is that you've got to focus on full price. It's about analyzing full price sales, trying to drive sales through full price and not via promotional or markdown activity. So to summarize the range board process, the first step is to determine where is the gap and what is the opportunity. Once you know where the opportunity is, then you will determine what the customer would like to buy. And then you will then go build a range in order to satisfy his or her requirement. You must then determine how much they're prepared to pay for it, and that will determine where you position your brand in terms of price. So the range board process ensures that you have a well-coordinated range in terms of look and feel and that you buy the range that you can offer to the customer in the correct volumes that will able to match the sales potential of the brand. This well-balanced range will entice the customer to come back and buy more items and more product from you, which is exactly what you are looking for. With customer buying patterns changing so frequently, you need to remain flexible and you need to adapt your range board accordingly. So I've taken you through the range board process. You've identified the business opportunity, you're busy building your range using the range board principles I've just taken you through. Now implement them and remain true to your brand. I started a new tween brand called Solarblock, um, and I've been working with African Fashion International who run and own two national fashion weeks. And I've been working with independent designers and I'm busy working at the moment with a platform um, in which will enable the designer to able to produce and manufacture um, their product ranges very economically and efficiently through a local manufacturer and retailer. This cluster program I'm trying to develop is through a mass retailer as well as with the DTI and the IDC. Stop. I keep dropping this thimble. Is, is that a problem? And be if. What? <laughs> <laughs> um, is that too flat or I don't know that wasn't so bad